doctors have read it. What patient made you go, how are you even alive? Part 2. Obligatory, not a doctor. I'm a funeral director and I received the body of a 90-something man. I could tell he'd been sick for quite some time just by looking at his face. Another funeral director did the embalming, so I hadn't seen the rest of his body. Seeing that he was so old and just looked sick, I was surprised when I met with his daughter and she inquired about an autopsy. I asked her my usual questions and discovered that this man for 40 plus years had unregulated diabetes. He was shot on three different occasions in his life. He had a history of strokes, bed sores, deep ones, in and out of hospital for sepsis, pneumonia, heavy smoker, heavier drinker, suffered a major heart attack just days before. His vision was going and he couldn't keep himself awake. Horrible jaundice, cirrhosis, had an infected kidney removed, on and on. I don't think this man lived one healthy day in the last 20 years. I asked the daughter, so you want an autopsy because... She tells me that her father was not an ill man and it was not his time to go. She's furious, I even questioned her request. I'm baffled that this man lived for 90 plus years. The denial people can experience in hand with grief is astounding. Two patients that give me faith in what medicine can do when I think about it, both quite young to be so sick. First was a woman who was very pregnant and some genius doc agreed to put her under twilight anesthesia for an elective procedure that definitely could have waited. She went into labor while she was under and from there had everything go wrong ended up in cardiac arrest was transported to my hospital and put on VA ECMO. She was in rough shape when I saw her first. Most people in her condition don't make it. I ended up seeing her a month later walk into my OP clinic and I got the creepiest feeling. It was like seeing a ghost. She was fine. Not like most people who come out of the ICU after that kind of stay. The second was a young guy who bled out in the ICU of a sudden hemorrhage. He was pulseless for an hour. Without going into a bunch of details, he required several procedures after that which were risky on their own. It took weeks for him to reboot, but eventually he was responding to stimuli. After a couple of months, he walked out of the hospital. He wasn't dying, he was dead for an hour. That these two survived is a testament to modern medical science. That they walked out of the hospital on their own, needing little to no assistance, and with their cognition completely intact, that is a miracle. I had lost a lot of blood to anemia and went into the doctor for something else. She starts looking into my eyes, my gums, pinching my cheeks and telling me that I'm a severe anemic and then said, are you always this white and pale? And I'm like, yeah, I guess. And then she made me take a test. Turns out my blood level hemoglobin was at 6.5 and dropping because of my heavy menstrual cycle and stomach issues not absorbing iron. I'd gone into the doctor because I had really bad heartburn. Turns out that I was really low on blood. It explained all the dizziness, the coldness, eating ice by the pound, auditory hallucinations were happening and I started to just not care about anything. Had numbness in my whole body as well and trouble breathing. I'd been in such a dire state that I started to accept all of these things as normal. When I checked myself into the ER, I told them that my doctor told me to come in, but I think she was overreacting and I can probably just go home. They quickly tested me. My blood level had dropped a little in a couple of days and I still had heavy menstruation. They quickly admitted me to start my blood transfusion. They said that had I waited, I would have likely gone into cardiac arrest or would have just died in my sleep. After the blood transfusion, I felt amazing. I could breathe and my skin color was back. I had a patient in the emergency room who had been involved in an awful car accident where firefighters and paramedics spent an hour trying to just get him out of his car. Reportedly, he attempted to walk to the ambulance and when he arrived, he was awake and talking. Confused speech, but still. Then paramedics signaled the back of his head to me. His skull was popped open on the back so much that I could see inside. We paged the brain surgeon immediately and the patient was taken directly to the operation theater. 
Months later, I heard from my colleague that he was still alive and had no damages other than some occasional balance problems. So not the doctor, but the patient. I had a super bad allergic reaction that was a specific type of allergic reaction that was deadly on its own. It would have been deadly if I had only taken a small bit of the medicine I was allergic to, but the doctor that prescribed it accidentally prescribed about 10 times more than what the maximum dose for that medication is supposed to be. So not only was I super allergic, I was also overdosed on what I was allergic to. So that led into weeks of me being in the ICU and doctors thinking I had about a 3% chance of surviving at best. Every time I was conscious and had family visiting, a doctor would tell me to make the most of it because I probably wasn't going to make it for their next visit. Eventually, I somehow recovered, but for about two years after, I was still regularly going to several doctors to make sure different things were okay that were affected by it. Every single doctor I went to would hug me and would have other doctors and nurses come in and say something like, hey, you don't remember this because you were unconscious at the time, but I helped restart your heart. Or, I was the person that vacuumed the blood and pus out of your throat that was blocking your air path. And they were all just amazed that I had made it. It's been about eight years since it all went down, and I've run into several of the doctors and nurses around the city, and they still recognize me and still hug me. It amazes me in how such a large city with such a huge hospital that gets the most extreme medical cases from around the world that they still remember me being there. Not a doctor, but was the patient. When I was in boot camp, I developed an upper respiratory infection during the second phase. I didn't want to get dropped back a platoon, so I gutted through. I got back and went to sick call where they treated me for a host of things. When they x-rayed my chest, the doctors came out with my films and literally asked, How the hell are you still alive? Your lungs are so full of mucus you should be dead. Turned into walking pneumonia at some point. I also had athlete's foot that turned into cellulitis and my last wisdom tooth yanked. So the combination of meds they had me on was enough that I don't even remember that week at all. Not a doctor, but a patient. I was in the hospital after a pretty gnarly four-wheeler wreck. I was destroyed, fractured my skull, broke three ribs, my right shin, it was sticking out of my leg, broke my collarbone, my right arm, had some pretty bad cuts and bruising, fractured three vertebrae in my lower spine, and internal bleeding. I've had a pretty high threshold for pain basically my entire life because I've always been clumsy or stupid, but that was awful, even after I was given pain meds. At some point, I don't know exactly when it was, I was in and out quite a bit, I heard two doctors conversing outside my curtain. One of them said, I don't know how she keeps regaining consciousness. There's no way she should be awake right now. The other doctor replied, Honestly, I don't know how she's even alive. I think they thought I was asleep. I don't know, but that scared the hell out of me. I'm not a doctor, but I did meet a patient who fell from a five-story building, landed on his upper back, woke up in the hospital the next morning, and got up walking around like nothing ever happened. Barely a scratch on him. Think about it every time I'm in a building with at least five stories. Just looking down like, how in the world did this guy walk away from that like he fell off his bike and took a nap? Actually, I've seen worse injuries from someone falling off a bike, lol. Upper back? might have used proper breakfall technique and taken only a fraction of the impact force he would have otherwise. I'm a midwife, and we have patients who have massive obstetric hemorrhage, MOH, which is classed as any blood loss over 2 liters. This can happen for a variety of reasons. We had a patient who unexpectedly started hemorrhaging following an uncomplicated normal vaginal delivery and just couldn't stop it. As soon as we pumped blood in, it hosed out. The doctors had to perform an emergency hysterectomy and the bleeding stopped. I think it's fair to say we were all shocked, not just at the incident itself, but at the fact that this woman lost 8 liters of blood. Also, she spent just one night in intensive care before she was back on the ward, caring for her newborn and she was home within a week. Women are bloody awesome. Excuse the pun. For reference, women usually have between 4.5 to 5.2 liters of blood circulating in their body. Hence, 8 liters is very scary. 
This was many years ago, so I can't recall the exact details, but basically, we had a lady on ventilation with sepsis and multi-organ failure. Renal failure, respiratory failure, metabolic acidosis, deranged liver enzymes, the whole works. We counseled the family and they agreed to withdraw life support, so DNR was issued and we took her off her ventilator. A few days later, she's still around. Unconscious, still in full-blown sepsis with multi-organ failure, but brainstem functions were there. I remember looking at her charts with my registrar, I think resident in the US, and my registrar going, but how? Then one day, maybe about a week on, during visiting hours, the patient's son approached us before he left to thank us for looking after his mother. His parting words were, and I kid you not, I don't know if it's relevant, but my mother practiced black magic. My registrar made the ward sister contact the hotel chaplaincy team to inquire if they do an exorcism. They don't. My blood sugar was less than 1000 when I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. I was less than a year old. My mom had taken me to the doctor's office four times in three days, but the nurse called her a nervous mom and sent her home. Also diagnosed with Addison's disease a couple of years ago, I'd probably had it for months and had been living on my own in a town where I knew nobody. The day I got home, I basically had a conscious blackout. Happened a few more times over the next couple of weeks and I lost the ability to sense low blood sugars. When I was finally hospitalized, I was in Addisonian crisis. Took them three days to bring in an endocrinologist and he knew what was wrong within minutes. They told me my heart would have stopped within a week due to a low sodium, high potassium. 